Hello and welcome to this live stream. Now, this is all about making sure that your live stream runs efficiently and effectively when you first press that go live button. And uh, yeah, what happened to me was LinkedIn has decided to only allow me to stream at uh, 1080p, even though that the stream was set to 4K. Now, that's something I've learned today. I thought LinkedIn would actually downscale the resolution to uh, to a manageable um, 1080p, but it didn't. So, all right, let's not worry about that. So welcome to this uh, live stream and Creator Cafe Live. The purpose of today's live stream is to talk about five things that you need to check or you should be checking before you go live. And one of them I will add to this list after we finished is make sure that LinkedIn is working for you. But anyway, not to worry too much about that. Let me just grab my mouse and go over to here. So we'll crack on with this presentation. All right, so this is your pre-show checklist for live streaming. Now, I've aimed this at users of Ecamm Live because this is the software that I use. But this can also be used for OBS, StreamYard or any service that you go in live because these are just things that you need to sort of be aware of. Make sure that you check these off before you go live to make sure that your live stream runs as smooth as possible. All right, so the first one is to reboot your machine, whether it be a Mac or a PC. I always recommend to get the machine rebooted before you actually go live. Now you may be asking, well, why should I bother doing this? Well, one of the main things is that if a machine has been running for a while, typically if you're running a laptop or something like that, unless you're doing an OS upgrade or you're in Windows 95, you're not going to be rebooting that often. So your machine can be bloated and filled with all kinds of applications that are running that are consuming resources, CPU, memory and so on. So it's always good practice to just restart and reboot your machine so you're at a clean level playing field when it comes to going live. Now in addition to that there may be a number of applications that start during the boot up process. In the Mac for example you've got logging items so that means applications and services that start up as soon as you've logged in to your machine. So I always find that if these applications are running in the background, either disable them or just quit them completely unless you need them for your live stream specifically, especially if you're demoing a piece of software or something like that. The other thing is that I use things like we all do, iCloud syncing, Google Drive, Dropbox and stuff like that. Now they can also run in the background, but more importantly, if you are running shared drives or things like that, then other people can be uploading files uh, in the background. And that can also obviously consume resources and more importantly, it can consume bandwidth, which is what you need for a successful, decent live stream. All right, so number two is to make sure that you've got a decent internet connection. Now, if you have a number of guests coming on your show, then you need to consider the download speed of your internet. Now, typically when you're doing a live stream like I'm doing right now, I don't have any guests on my show. So the thing that you need to pay attention to is your upload speed because you are actually pushing your live stream up to the interwebs. Now with Ecamm Live, you can also have multi-streaming, which means you have multiple streaming feeds going from your single computer up to the internet. So you need to make sure that you have sufficient bandwidth available for you to consume and run your live stream. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, you can run a program called speedtest.net or fast.com. They are internet based services that will check both your upload and your download speed. Now if you're an Ecamm live user like I am, Ecamm also has a little built in speed test uh, in the settings and it's right here you can see. So it will check for you based on the number of destinations that you have set up on your stream whether you've got sufficient bandwidth or not and it will tell you that your internet speed is X but you need Y to have a successful stream. So make sure that you have the right amount of bandwidth available to you. 
and make sure that members of your family are not consuming things like Tiger King or the latest Netflix blockbuster because that can also consume a lot of bandwidth. So if possible, just make sure that people in your household and your family members are not doing some crazy stuff on the internet that can affect your overall bandwidth. All right, let's go to point number three. So the other thing to check is to make sure that your microphone audio levels are set correctly. Um, if you've got multiple guests, it's worth checking when they come online to do a pre-check to make sure that you can hear them, they can hear you, and more importantly, they're loud and proud. If you've got music and sound effects playing in the background, you don't want to have the music louder than your vocal because you're going to be drowned out and nobody's going to be able to hear you effectively. So make sure that your sound effects and any music that you've got playing in the background, it uh, is at a reasonable level, so you're not uh, sort of overpowering your audio. The other thing to make sure is that make sure your lights are set up correctly, make sure that your lights are operational, and if you've got multiple lights as I have, make sure they're all switched on. If they need battery, then make sure they're fully charged before you go live, because the last thing you want is a light to switch off right in the middle of your live stream. And make sure that the color correction on your camera is set. It should be set anyway. Um, you can save these settings within your camera, and then every time you turn on your camera, the white balance and the colors look fine. But all these things are worth checking uh, before you actually go live because obviously you don't want to be messing around and trying to fix things right in the middle of a live stream. Point number four is check your scenes and do a test recording. So things like OBS, Ecamm Live, StreamYard, all of the concepts of scenes and scenes are things like this where you can flip between you know a full view of yourself or a presentation that you're doing. These scenes are important to be set up beforehand and know the running order of your scenes. There's nothing worse than getting into a live stream, some form of presentation, and then you lose where you are within your scene flow. So um, it's important to make sure that any scenes that you've got set up, that you're going to be um, sequential, you know which scene is coming next, make sure you have your end scene and your closing scenes all set up as well and make sure that you run through those as a run of show and practice before you begin. If you've got guests coming on, they may have something that they want to present as well. So it's always good to make sure that your guests are comfortable, you've tested their audio, as I've mentioned before, and the guests themselves know what they're presenting and how to present that at what particular time within your show. So I've always found it useful to do a test recording with your guests and yourself. And also don't forget that things like um, YouTube and other streaming services allow you to do either a private or an unlisted stream. So you can test the quality of a stream on YouTube, for example, or you can do a private uh, scene where you can test comments and things like that before you actually go live. So it's always good practice to do a bit of recording, make sure everything looks good, and then when it comes to doing your live stream, everything is fine and dandy. All right, let's go to number five. And number five is quite important because there's nothing worse than your phone dinging, your Mac dinging, whatever it might be with notifications right in the middle of a live stream. It's quite distracting for your viewers. It's certainly distracting for yourself. So make sure you enable do not disturb on your um, phones and Macs and stuff like that to make sure and your watch because I have a watch on here and it often dings right in the middle of something. So make sure that that is also set to do not disturb so you don't get interrupted and interrupt your flow of your live stream. Always have some water, coffee or something handy because if you're talking a lot on a particular live stream, there's nothing worse than getting dry and then you're right in the middle and your mouth feels pretty horrible, as mine does right now. So I'm going to take a little sip. Yummy. Very nice indeed. So make sure you have some water with you. Stay hydrated. And also something that I did not do at the beginning of this because I actually did test it before and it was working fine is check your streaming destinations. With multi-streaming and services that allow you to stream 
to multiple destinations, you may not want to have everything enabled for a particular live stream. You may not want to stream to your Facebook group, group sorry, even if you're just uh, wanting to stream to YouTube or something like that. So make sure that when you are going live, you are going live to the streaming destinations that you want. So whether it be YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and the like, just make sure that all those are working effectively and check your streaming destinations. Now, something went wrong at the beginning of this stream, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with LinkedIn Live, where it didn't like the resolution that I was sending to uh, LinkedIn from Ecamm. So I need to check into that because it has worked for me before without any problems. So now I'll need to check it again and make sure that that works. But that was something that tripped me up today. And as you can see, even when I've gone through my checklist, there's something that you may overlook. So it's really important to make sure you know where you're streaming to, make sure your destinations are working fine, and then everything will flow very nicely. So here is the summary of what I've just spoken about. It's a very short stream today, but it's just an important one because obviously things can trip you up when you go live. It is live after all, so if things are going to go wrong, they will certainly go wrong when you are actually going live. So number one is make sure you reboot and restart your Mac. Number two is check your internet speed, switch off Netflix and stop people streaming. Number three is make sure your audio is working fine, your lights are on and everybody can hear you. And if you've got guests, you can hear them. Uh, make sure your scenes and run of show is flowing in the way that you want. And make sure that you're streaming, point number five, to those destinations that you expect to stream to. Switch off. Uh, any notifications on your systems, enable do not disturb, and make sure you have plenty water. So I'm going to pause for a second, uh, just check if there are any comments. I also want to check what's happening with this system here. Give me a second. All right. It says we're still running live, but who knows now, particularly with um, all these uh, different services. But anyway, thank you for watching. Um, one thing I wanted to mention as well, that if you are running a Mac, you can actually get an application that will allow you only to send um, your connectivity, your network connectivity to specific destinations. So even if you have a number of different programs running in the background that are sending data to the internet, i.e., you know, uh, connecting, from your machine, you can actually have a little application that disables everything apart from the streaming services that you want. Um, and that's actually called, let me just find it now, um, it's actually called uh, Trip Mode. Let me just move this little thing out of the way. Okay, just like that. Some reason it's not allowing me to move this today. I know why. Let me just disable that other thing. Okay. All right. So trip mode is an application that uh, sits on your Mac. It's basically a docked application that allows you to disable any of the internet-based services that um, are going outbound from your machine. So if you scan that QR code, it is a free application and you can download it for free and get it set up. And it's a great little tool that will stop any other um, internet based services talking from your Mac during your live stream and consuming bandwidth that you don't want. Anyway, uh, I don't see that there is any comments or anything like that, but uh, I do appreciate you stopping by. If you're watching on the replay, Add any comments in there. And I'd like to know from you any tips and tricks when you're doing your live stream, anything that I've overlooked, anything that have tripped you up in the past. And uh, let me know any tips and tricks for uh, providing and doing a successful live stream. Until next time, I'm going to close the stream and I'll see you in the next one.